Hi, my name is Joshua Sanchez and I'm an actor. And in my time and experience throughout the years, I've looked at different tactics and different techniques, but from different actors and such like that. And the one thing that's always stuck with me, that's always been brought up, method acting. What is it? Where did it come from? So what it says here is that it evolved from techniques pioneered by Konstantin Stanislavski, where he called it the Stanislavski system or the system. It was developed in New York in the 1930s and 40s by members of the group theater, including Lee Strasberg and Stella Adler. Method acting is a technique where actors put themselves through intense training, diving deep into the characters to the point where they forfeit their own self, fully embracing their traits and also empathizing with them. And at some points, it can get so it can be really hard getting back out of that. According to Isaac Butler, it's a way for actors to use themselves, their psychology, their life experiences, and their emotions as a way of bridging the gap between actor and character. Before we dive deeper, first I wanted to hear from someone on the mental health side of actors and how they can keep themselves safe while still doing their work. I'm gonna make a call to Natalie Cortez, Broadway actor who's now studying social work and actually has perspective on all sides of this. Hi Natalie. So tell us a little about your acting background and what made you want to switch to what you're currently doing? Twofold. Um, my acting background is um, musical theater, mostly. Um, but I did all sorts of training. I went to CAP 21 when it was still there at NYU. And um, I ended up um, doing two Broadway shows. I did a chorus line and I did West Side Story. Um, but I was trained in lots of different methods of acting. Um, we were, and I liked that training because we kind of mixed and matched. So I got a little bit of everything. Um, and okay, so social work, uh, I'm currently getting my master's in social work. And it's interesting because a lot of people feel like that's a big leap, but it really isn't. I mean, when you learn acting and learn acting technique, you realize you're just interested in people and you're interested in what makes them tick, what their motivations are, what their obstacles are, just like you would a character. And um, the more I did that, the more I realized like, no, I, I think I really want to do this. You know, I don't want to just portray people at their most extreme, which is what we do on stage, you know, you, you write people at their most extreme and then you you harness that. And after a while, I just, I got more interested in just helping and healing. Um, and that's basically what ended up happening. What are the possible mental health ramifications of traditional method acting? To me, method acting is more of a process. It's more of, um, it's great for practice and it's great for rehearsal because it, especially for, for older, I think you have to be, it's not for kids, right? With method acting, you have to basically, please correct me if I'm wrong. You basically take an emotional memory, your emotional thoughts, your personal journeys, and when you were feeling the most extreme emotions and what kind of behavior that brought out. And that's just to make you more self-aware of how you use your hands when you speak, when, when you have actual stimuli that, that means something to you and it's not imagined. To me, this is not something you carry out on stage. This is something that um, actors learn about themselves in order to, to kind of mix the imagination and the real behavior together. Um, I think that the mental health ramifications are multi-level, which is why I like social work because social work is not just about psychology. Social work is also about, also about the social environment and the biology. So you're you're taking into consideration your your actors, your directors, how you are backstage. These things get affected when you only allow yourself to be referred to as your character. It's, it's unprofessional, in my opinion. 
You know, if, if you can't learn how to separate that, then, you know, is it still acting? You know, that's kind of a philosophical question I know that's been asked a lot of times, but it can really have ramifications for who you are as a person and it can affect your social environment, it can affect your friends, it can affect how you handle the world, how you deal with your, um, you know, with the professionals around you. Um, so it can definitely affect that and it can isolate you. So isolation would be an, an intrapersonal effect of that, you know, so it can it can have an external effect and an inter internal effect. Now that we got into method acting, let's look at some alternatives to the traditional me method acting. I'm here with two actors who have different techniques and processes for preparing for a role. Caleb Grandois and Felicia Boswell. Now, without further ado, it's a pleasure to meet you guys. It's, it's great to have you guys here. What is your process like when preparing for a role? Oh gosh, um, for me, I am a huge research queen. So um, if I'm studying for a particular uh, person, if it is a real life person, I do as much research as I can, whether it's music or, um, you know, if there's video of the person. Um, sometimes if a role calls for me to do something that is completely out of my body, like playing a drug addict, you know, I have to um, uh, do different research, but I, as long as I can get my fingers and my mind on as much information as possible, I use that um, along with marrying what naturally and organically comes to Felicia to the role to make it make sense to tell the story. So it's more like the intellectual approach of it rather than the emotional aspects of it? I think it's everything. I think it's all of those things, you know, because um, as I said, you know, with, with marrying it to who I, I am, I am a person that is in tune with her emotions. I have to bring all of those things into, into storytelling. So as much information as I can find, even if it is, um, um, you know, chatting with um, someone that's actually experienced a thing that, you know, that I am trying to um, portray. Uh, matter of fact, there was, um, there was a time that I was um, uh, creating the role of uh, Josephine Baker uh, for a Broadway show and I went to Shea Josephine um, because that restaurant was uh, created by uh, one of her last living sons and it is basically, it's like being in Josephine's house. And, um, and I went there and I chat with the best friend of the son who now runs, um, who now runs, runs a restaurant. She let me walk around, I took pictures, and I just saturated myself with all things Josephine, whether it was you know, music or videos and talking to people that actually knew her, right. um, to kind of figure out who my Josephine would be. And then I married what Josephine wanted to be, as far as Felicia was concerned, how she wanted to speak through me to come forth. Similar to um, like being a writer, I, I, I kind of bring those aspects of that to, um, to help me to prepare for a role. Like when you, with writing, you, like, you think of like, where is the character from? Um, what, is, what, are they, what do they do on a daily basis? Um, who they interact with, what, what are their friends? Um, what do they do on their own time? So those are the things I, I think of when I'm preparing for a role. Um, similar, I had an audition, I remember not too long ago, for this role where it was like the first uh, gospel choir of this, I believe, Fisk University, um, which is like, it's right after, right after Slate was about to show, that's like 18, uh, I believe it was Slate, Slate in 1869. So um, I, I had no, there's no records for me to, to look at people to talk to, right. um, but um, I remember I, I would look at films of around that time to grasp um, how to you know, do that type of character. And um, I know, read books. I would read a lot of books about you know, how life was post post slavery. So those are the type of things that I, I do. And these are many different tactics that, like us as actors, like we apply to take on these characters. You know, like reading books, being in the same space as that person, you know. There's many different ways to have a better understanding of the space and the time that they were in and the type of person that they are. So these are the tactics that you have to dive into the character. 
what are what is it that you do to get yourself out of that? Because you could dive really deep into a character that you really are doing your very best to become that character, empathizing on however way that you see fit. Mm -hmm. Now, what are what are the things that you guys do to get yourself out of that? I I try to um, submerge myself so deeply in what um, what a role and what a character is asking of me um, that if I don't if if I don't have a process to getting back to Felicia, <laughs> then that can be unhealthy. And I think it depends on the, the actual role that you're playing. Um, there were a couple of times where I struggled with coming back to me. One in particular is when I played Celie in The Color Purple. It, is, it, it requires so much of me vocally but emotionally and physically because she, she ages from 14 to like 50, 55, 56. And, um, and if you give yourself over to what the character is asking of you, it takes such a huge toll on you. Um, and I remember I would come off stage um, at the end of the show and I would look to um, the, the two women um, who played Sophia and uh, Shug and I would be shaking and I would go, I need, I need, I need help. I can't, I can't, I can't shake her. She just, sometimes when they show up, they don't want to let go. You know, they're like, oh, we have a, you know, we have a vessel. We can like come through this thing. And I think that's the sweetest spot for me as an actor. When I can be so vulnerable that a character, a role, a real person like Josephine Baker um, comes through, that she's like, now I can say what I want to say. Um, I, I think that's the sweetest spot to be in. Um, uh, for an actor. I will say that I often will counter what I'm doing with something completely opposite from what is being required of me when I'm doing a role. Um, uh, specifically, um, when I play Diana Ross in Motown on Broadway, everybody knows the music of Motown. It's, it's so, it feels so good. It's like, it has everything that you, everything that you need, and you hear it for two and a half, hours every night yep. the last thing I wanted to do was hear music when I got home I want quiet I don't want to talk a lot or I'm gonna to listen to jazz or classical music it has to be completely different so I can wind down you have to treat um, the acting muscle the same way you treat your bodies after you've had a really strenuous uh, vocal session um, or um, you've worked your body out in the gym, you have to figure out what that process is to wind down so that you can do it all over again, or you will overexert yourself um, in, in such a way you have nothing you have nothing to give. Uh, do you yourself have any other ways that you can think off the top of your head? Yeah, that? Yeah. Um, I think that's kind of what I do is like finding things to do that's very opposite of what I'm doing. We're a lot alike, Caleb. Yeah, like, um, although I didn't get the role, but like, preparing for a role being kitsch from Passover, I feel so connected to that character and um, what he's going through. But I, I, I did practice the scenes and reading the play and like, I remember just being so emotionally invested that when I was done doing it, like I had to, I don't know, put on, put on a movie, watch, mm -hmm. um, listen to music just to get that away from you because right. that role is so like so dark you know um and even that his character isn't specifically dark just the play can be very dark um so yeah trying to find something else to exude a different emotion out of it. i definitely hear that there that, that those are definitely good tactics because at the end of the day it's like the key to this is like habit you know, if you really want to talk about it when it comes to portraying these characters, it's habit. Like these characters do this a certain thing. That some 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 of them bite their nails. Some of them got a scratch behind their ear. Like and take like have certain feelings because they're going through certain experiences. You guys, tell me about your techniques. What do you do to get yourself into the characters? How you get yourself out of the characters? You guys have your own respective tactics on how to approach these characters. That's awesome. Now. In the workspace, on set, wherever the wherever that may look like in the environment, there's other actors there that have different different ways to approach these characters. Some of them don't even want to be approached at all. How do you navigate through that? The operative word is respect. I think we have you have to respect uh, an artist's process. 
and that comes along with uh, non-judgment <laughs> and um, because everybody has has their way and I have I have been on set um, uh, on, on stages with people that are very particular about I like my quiet don't talk to me don't play loud music don't look me in the eye I'm over here in the dark like I'm you know meditating I'm doing a thing and that may not necessarily work for me but it works for them and at the end of the day if we can all find the commonality of, t of, of telling a story in its truth I don't really care what your process is you know as long as we can all show up um, you know toe to toe and flesh out flesh out the work um, um, I one of my my uh, Broadway leading men we found ourselves playing opposite each, each other on a television show and I said to him one day I said hey how do you how is this how is this different um, different for you um, and I'll just say his name was Brandon Victor Dixon and and Brand said um, the art is the art Technique is a technique, and you just apply it to whatever the new vehicle is, whatever the new space is, and you know. And I kind of felt the same way about it, but because I know um, of his um, his training that he's had, um, I I wondered how he applied uh, certain methods to different you know uh, facets of, of of his career and 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 the art. And he simply said. The art is the art. You know, you, you can take the same rules and the same way into a different situation, and you apply apply yourselves accordingly. So, and that works for Brandon. You know, you just have to respect that. I'm very observant. Like sometimes, probably too observant. I wouldn't say too observant, but sometimes it can come off like I'm like not wanting to be in a space. Right. Like I'm just watching how people act. Um, but yeah, I'm very observant. I like um, like seeing people outside of the room as well to know how to um, approach them when you know when the time is to come. Um, so I like I like to, I love to watch people and listen to their conversations, watch their their habits. With, you know, that's how I you know, kind of tackle that. Issue. It's like a study. It's yeah. still studying. That's, yeah. that's definitely that's yeah. definitely a uh, like. That, that's one way to definitely approach somebody or navigate within those within those places because also at the end of the day like that's their work as you said like art is art and, and however you portray it that's how it is and you got to respect their art and their and their piece and sometimes not all of them are going to be able to have the best communications in terms of approaching like hey like i'm not i'm this is me right now i need to, i need to be in my space some of them are not like that some of them just shut down so there are a lot of aspiring actors out there who really do want to see through to becoming an actor, to become a performer, an entertainer. Now, there's not a lot of things that these young actors may know. Some of them don't even get to have the opportunity to get the education that they're looking for. So, my question for you guys, for you two, what advice do you have for young actors who may be pushed to do emotionally unhealthy things for their art? Well, I, I think it, um, it just kind of reminds me of the conversation we were having uh, prior that you've got to figure out a way that um, you can calm down from the artistic high you know and, and I think that that's an individual thing um, depending on what the characters calling of you asking of you um, I think I think as long as the art can be the, be the art and it's not unhealthy or causes you um, bodily harm. The actor Jim Caviezel, who was in uh, Passion of the Christ, um, I read where he went days not eating when he had to do the big crucifixion scene. He went days not eating because he wanted to feel what it felt like um, you know, to take that walk that Jesus took, you know, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Like, what was that like when you were um, you know, uh, fasting or, you know, keeping yourself away from people, staying with just your circle, you know, um, and, and I, I found, I found that, that fascinating where other people can, you know, they're like, oh, let me get my Uber Eats and then I'll get back to the set when I get back to the set. I don't think that there, there is a wrong way to do this thing. I think at the end of the day, if you can always come back to self, whatever that means for you, I don't, I've played you know, a, a drug addict. I played prostitutes. I am none of those things. 
but I have to tell the story and it's truth. I played a rape victim where I actually had rape victims come to me and say, I saw myself in this thing and I thought, I, this is uncomfortable for me. I don't know what to say to you, um, but they saw themselves in, in, in the art and I was able to come back from that thing. So you gotta be, you, you, gotta, you gotta have the vulnerability and the passion to really go in and give whatever the character is calling from you, but you also gotta, gotta know how to release it. And I don't think there's, there's a formula to that. I think it depends on the individual artist. I would, say, I would definitely say um, know your own limits, you know, um, we all know what we're comfortable doing, what we're not comfortable doing. Um, so if someone's pushing you, so like you, for, you have a voice, um, at the end of the day they're giving you an opportunity but they're not, they're not giving you your talent because that is your talent, you have it, they can't give you that. Um, so although they're giving you a platform, although they're giving you a great opportunity, at the end of the day you can walk away. Um, this isn't you know, um, a life or death thing. You know, your, your life is way more important than you going all the way to a mental place that you can't come back from. You know? 100%. So um, definitely um, don't push yourself further than you're willing to go. I mean, you have to, you have to have, you have to have a boundary, but you also have to be limitless. Yeah. You can't approach this art being guarded. Again, I've played a lot of roles that have absolutely nothing to do with me. But this is somebody's story. Mm. This is someone's truth. And we have a responsibility as artists to tell these stories in their truth. If it is something that is so damaging to my psyche that I go, I can't handle this. I can't handle this piece of work. Then I have, as an artist, as you're saying, um, I can, you know, take myself out of that situation but at the same time I like the challenge of I am very uncomfortable mm -hmm. I am I don't know this world at all and let me see who I am in this world because at the end of the day we are storytellers and I need to be able to tell her story and his story and their story it's important to me to always be as honest as I can in my storytelling even if it's uncomfortable as long as I can get back to me, right, in a safe right. way, right. no physical abuse, no drug abuse, no alcoholic abuse, no beating myself up, not believing I am who I am. As long as you can safely get back to you, I think there should be no limits. There should be that safe space limits, where you can but limitless. Go there should always be that safe space where you can always go back. To you like can this. go back, and if you can't navigate yourself back to it, then maybe you you have a limit when it comes to that particular thing or role, you know. Um, but I like I like the challenge of that. Yeah, and if, if it is a role that is like you find yourself like not being able to like go there, ask yourself why. You know, do the work on like figuring out what it is about yourself that's keeping you so guarded. You know, and if you are able to, to discover what that is and go there, then go there. But you know, if it's something um, that you're not willing. Yeah, I, I think that, again, I think that that's the sweetest spot, when you can find yourself the most vulnerable. Like, you know, yes, ask those questions. Ask why this is un uncomfortable. If it's a situation where you can't figure out with your own <laughs> your own resources, then that's rooted in something else. And that calls for counsel and or therapy or what have you. But as artists, we have to be we have to be malleable we have to you, you know we have to be like tofu you put us in and whatever sauce you put in that's what we taste like you know what i mean we, we have we have to do that and i think i think if an artist does not approach work in that way you can't get to the sweetest spot and i am just that kind of naked when i approach a character that's how i do it as actors we are our own product we are our own product and there has to be that sweet spot where we need to put ourselves in these uncomfortable uh, situations mm -hmm. in order for us to grow. Mm -hmm. Because you're never going to grow if we're constantly in a comfortable place. Mm -hmm. So I do agree with you when, when, it, when it comes to saying like if you're in a comfortable spot as an actor, that means you are growing more not only as an actor but also as a human being. Because at the end of the day, we're portraying people. We're portraying, we're portraying people who have trauma, we have people who have experiences, both good and bad, losses, 
and it's a vast majority and I feel like the biggest thing that we have to do as actors is to empathize with them, understand them, because they're humans too. Mm -hmm. And with that also comes through exploring oneself. Mm -hmm. With that being said, like, thank you guys for the insight, for the knowledge, for the different perspectives, and thank you for your time. Thank you for having us. All right. So, that's everything you need to know about method acting, other techniques, and how to take care of yourself when going there, no matter what technique you use. I'm Joshua Sanchez. Please like, subscribe, and follow Opening Act.